Welcome back everybody, good to have you. A question that I have been hearing a lot lately is what can we expect from Milwaukee real estate values in the future? Are prices going to continue to go up as we've seen it over the last few years? Or are we due for some sort of a price correction, maybe even the market crash where we see home values in the Milwaukee area come down? So that's a really interesting question. It's on a lot of people's mind. They have been growing skeptical over home prices going up year over year. So that's what I want to talk about today. I thought it deserved its own video uh, to take a look at that. Now, of course, nobody can predict the future. I cannot do that either. It hasn't happened yet. But what we can do is we can look at the underlying mechanics that are driving prices currently, and that might give us some ideas of what we can expect in the future. So with that, let's get started. I had a lot of fun putting this together, by the way. There were a few moments where I was really scratching my head and I'm like, wow, can this be true? So interesting stuff I have for you today. Let's get started. All right. So this is a little bit of a historical context. And uh, you can see here that prices really have increased a lot over the last eight years. We have seen plus 50%. Home prices went from a median of $160,000 to now $290,000 in March of 2023. So you're looking at this and you're wondering, well, can we continue on this pace? What can we expect from the next 10 years? Is it possible that a median home in Milwaukee could cost $435,000 or more? Or is it more likely that we're going to see prices go sideways, maybe even come down and home prices are going to lose value here in the Milwaukee area? So that's the question for the day. Before we get into that, let me give you a little bit background of where this information here is coming from. So there's really two components to this. First of all, I subscribe to a lot of professional and paid research. That's the type of research and data and analytics that banks like US Bank or Goldman Sachs or investment firms are using when they're modeling their market predictions. So I consume a lot of that on a monthly basis. You can see here um, a lot of my sources on the right side. On the left side, I'm also very active in the Milwaukee real estate market. Just to give a little context, last year, we closed 133 transactions. So I see a fair bit of what's going on here locally in the market. And then I try to make sense between what I'm reading on professional research and what I'm seeing here in the marketplace. And that is basically what you can see every month here on my monthly market update. So this is a little bit of the background. Let's get to our topic for today. So if you've been recently in the market and bought a house in the Milwaukee area, then you are probably familiar with this feeling. Buying a house right now can feel a little bit like playing musical chairs. And normally you would have about roughly as many players as you would have chairs. So usually you have one chair less than players to make the game interesting. But the situation that we have currently it feels like we have twice as many players and we only have two chairs that everybody is competing for. So that is pretty much the impression that you get when you're currently buying a house here in Milwaukee. And you can see how that sort of a situation really drives up competition and really drives up prices. If you want to see this in a little bit more analytical way, then I have a chart here that explains it pretty well. So we measure inventory in months. How many months would it take before everything is being sold that's currently on the market? And when you look here at the middle segment here in light gray, we're between uh, six and seven months here. This is a neutral market. So we have enough inventory that will last us about six to seven months until everything is sold. That's a neutral, a balanced market. Um, if we go above that, we are in a buyer's market. So there is a lot more inventory. We've had this situation famously, everybody will remember, between 2007 and 2010, 12. So we had a lot of inventory in a very short amount of time. We had so many foreclosures that about four times of the annual sales volume spilled onto the market. So it was a huge overhang of available houses available. That was a very pronounced buyer's market. Buyers are in control, so the buyers were able to set the price and they said, you know what, there's so many houses on the market, I'm just going to offer less than what you're asking. And the banks just had to comply with that. That's the reason why prices went down in the buyer's market. Right now, as you probably know, we are in a very strong seller's market. So that's the green area. Inventory is very low, so we have many times more buyers than we actually do have sellers. And of course, this dynamic is driving prices. 
But why is that? How is it possible that over the course of 15 years, we go from a situation where we have way too many houses, not enough buyers, to a situation where we have way too many buyers and seemingly not enough houses? What's behind that? I think a lot of people are taking their cues from the stock market. And the stock market is very different than the real estate market. In the stock market, things can literally change overnight. One day, everybody's a buyer, the news are great, the stock is going up, everybody wants to buy it. Then bad news come out, next day, everybody is a seller. Literally, everybody is selling. The real estate market, it works a little bit different because it's not possible that we all become sellers because we literally, at the end of the day, need a house to go home to. So the real estate market works a lot slower for that reason. It's, a, it's more like an oil tanker. It takes a really long time to change its course and that gives us some cues. So one of the areas that we have to look at is demographics. And I have a chart here that shows you all the demographics in the US from Gen Z to millennials, Gen X, baby boomers, and then the silent generation and the greatest generation. So when you look at society as a whole, then there is basically a big, gigantic recycling loop going on for the real estate market. The older generations are typically the ones that are the number one seller segment and the younger generation that are in the household formation years, they are the number one buyer segment. And it's very easy to see that at the moment, physically, the millennials are a much, much bigger demographic segment than the older generation, the baby boomers and the silent generation. To make matters even worse, we also have a new trend that's called aging in place. So the older generation is making themselves comfortable in their house and they're staying there instead of putting the house on the market. And that is further restricting supply to the market. So this in a nutshell is basically the demographic issue that the real estate market is currently working through. Let's break this down and see what that means for the Milwaukee area. So we have about 1.6 million people living here. That includes all the suburbs. And we can break this down by generation. So we have the kids here, we have generation C, which is the young adults, about 325,000. Millennials, about 352. Then we have Gen X, that's about 318,000, my generation. Then we have the boomers, about 348,000, and then elder. Now the issue is, of course, not all the millennials are going to buy a house in the same year. They're a little late to the game. They're doing the household formation later than previous generations but about 17,500 should be buying a house every year on average. Now, if you look at the other generations, of course, there is some Gen Z and some Gen X and some boomers that are also buying houses. So when you do the math, you're looking at about 35, 40,000 buyers that we should have every year. Now, when you look at the real estate market here in the area, you can very easily see that we average about 14, 15,000 houses being sold in any given year. And that kind of illustrates where the issue is, why we have a demographic issue when you look at the real estate market. So if we need more houses for young people, why are we not building more? And that is actually a really good question. So here I have a chart that shows you single family construction in the US all the way back to the 1970s. And the black line here illustrates the longstanding 50 year average of how many houses we're building every year just to keep up with our growing population. And what happened is we had an overproduction that started in the mid 1990s. You can kind of see that here, how we're ramping up. And then of course it led to the big crash, the big housing bubble where home prices fell massively. A lot of builders went out of business and the ones that remained had very little appetite to risk a lot and build a lot of new houses. So what happened is that production came way down and for the last 14 years, we have produced on average way below the historic norms. So we basically have dug a hole. There is a deficit in new construction homes, and that is further also restricting us on the supply side. If we look at this as a nation, we have different estimates. I have here all the way from Realtor, Bank of America, um, all the way down to Moody's. They all have different numbers, how many million homes they're estimating we are currently uh, in, the, in the back. And I'm going with Freddie Mac here in the middle. They estimate we have 3.8 million homes sold. So if you averaged it out, we should need about 76,000 homes in every state. Now, when you look at Wisconsin and I have the numbers here, we are not doing so great in the department. I have the numbers here from the last two years, 2020 and 21. And you can see we're only producing houses in the hundreds per county. Total as a state of Wisconsin, around 12,000 houses. 
So it will take us forever to basically catch up with new construction. And the other issue with that is when you look around a little bit and you see new construction, everything that we're building is between five hundred and seven hundred thousand dollars. So that doesn't really help the first time home buyers that are looking for two hundred fifty or three hundred fifty thousand dollars a house. So we would need to build a lot more houses a lot faster and for a lower price point to actually help out with that inventory situation that we have. And that's not easy for builders to do. That requires changes in zoning. That requires builders to take more risks, hire more people, ramp up the supply chain and really crank up production. And that is currently not happening. So let's recap. Inventory is really that critical component when you look at the tension between supply and demand. And I have here the inventory for Milwaukee County over the last eight years. You can see the typical seasonal swings that we have. But overall, the rate of change in our inventory measured in month of supply is rather slow. Now, we are currently at a very low inventory situation, which is driving the price dynamic that we have been seeing over the last few years. And before we can see a change in that price dynamic, we would have to see the inventory levels change quite a bit. So once we go up to remember about six months, that is a neutral market. If we go above six months, that will put us in a buyer's market. So before we see the price dynamic change in the Milwaukee market, we will first have to see the inventory situation change. And unless we find suddenly a bunch of homes we didn't know that have existed, the rate of change is going to be very slow. And with that, it's also going to take a while before we see a change in the price dynamic. So you can see why inventory is so important. And that's the reason why I start every monthly market update here on my YouTube channel with looking at this number inventory. It is really the most important number to look at because once we see a change in trend in what's happening with the inventory in a local market, we know that's a leading indicator that the price dynamic might be changing in the future. So that's a good reason right there to subscribe to my YouTube channel and stay updated what's going on with inventory and also with everything else that's going on in the Milwaukee real estate market. But what about mortgage rates? Doesn't that play a big role in the real estate marketplace? And I would say the answer is yes and no. So here's a chart that goes back all the way to the early 1980s, where famously mortgage rates were over 15, 16%. And believe it or not, people were still buying houses at the time. And over the decades, rates have come down. About a year ago, we hit an all-time low of less than 3%, which is, of course, not sustainable, basically free money. And a lot of people at the time were concluding that the real estate market rally that we have seen was fueled by these ultra low mortgage interest rates. And I'm certain there is some truth to that. So that was uh, for sure a component to this. But the interesting part is what we have seen in the second half of the year. So in the summer rates started to rise 6% and in November we hit 7%. And at the time I was really wondering what's going to happen with buyer demand. And what we have seen in the last four or five months is that buyer demand has held very, very strong and very firm, despite the fact that mortgage rates have more than doubled. So that goes to show how strong the resolve of young home buyers is. They have decided they're sick and tired of paying rent and they want to buy a house. They are not liking the mortgage rates the way they are right now, but it, the alternative is to continue renting and rents are going up uh, by the way as well. So they have concluded that it's better to buy a house despite the high mortgage rates. And that goes to show how fundamental and how strong the demand side is that we're actually seeing in the market. Since we're talking about interest rates, we also have to take a quick look at inflation. And that oftentimes gets overlooked in the context of real estate. So inflation is really a devaluation of money. So you need to bring now more dollars to buy the same amount of groceries than you needed a year ago. So the dollar is worth less. Real estate is a hard asset. It's considered an excellent hedge against inflation. So as the dollar is going down, you need to bring more dollars to buy the same property, which also explains why real estate is going up usually a little bit better than the rate of inflation, which normally is around two or three percent. So over the last years, you know this from the evening news, of course, we have seen inflation a lot higher than what the Fed is targeting for the two to three percent. So a part of the price increases that we have seen is just because we have devalued our dollar. And for some people, this is not very tangible. So I was looking for an example to show to you. And I found a house in Ann Arbor here on Platt Road that was originally for sale in May of 1960 for $14,990. 
you could buy it with an FHA loan and only $390 down. So now we are 63 years later. I actually found this very house and it's valued today at $346,800. And if you do the math over the 63 years that have passed, that equals about a 5.1% annual increase in home value. So this is a number to keep in mind. If, if it doesn't quite make sense how inflation is impacting real estate values, I think this illustrates it a little bit and that shows how the dollar used to be worth a lot more. So you could buy a house for 15 grand. Obviously, you can't do that today anymore. Another new and emerging trend that we are seeing is that more people are considering moving to Milwaukee than 20 or 30 years ago. Over the last 10 years, Milwaukee has changed a lot. We have about 1 million tourists visiting here every year. And a lot of them leaving from their vacation thinking Milwaukee is actually pretty cool and they like the vibe here. They work remotely, so they're considering moving here. We're seeing this because we work with a lot of relocation clients at the moment. I think that trend is not big enough to really shape our marketplace here. It's not like Texas or Florida where people are moving to by the 10,000s, but we're definitely moving up in popularity. And that will have an impact on our market over the next 10 years. When you look at real estate values across the US, you can easily see that the Midwest is the lowest priced market in the US. A lot of the coastal markets are priced much, much higher. Affordability is really bad in these markets. And a lot of homeowners that are living there have a lot of equity in their homes. So when they sell their house, they can move to the Midwest, pick a city there, they work remotely, so that's not a problem. And they're coming in with a lot of cash. So I think over the next decade, this will have a certain impact on our local real estate market. And when you talk to people, money is not the only reason why they're considering moving to the U.S. Family is oftentimes something that we hear, but also access to fresh water, to moderate temperatures, you know, not having triple digits for four or five months straight. So all that, I think, will play a certain role over the next 10 years in our market. Since we spoke about relocating to Milwaukee, let's take a look at Milwaukee real estate prices in comparison to the national average which is the red line here. Two things stand out here. First of all, the national average had a little bit of a runaway development in the last two or three years. Milwaukee has been a lot more steady, a lot more modest in its development. But when you travel a little bit in the US, you very quickly realize that Milwaukee is not a below average city. So there should not really be a reason that Milwaukee real estate is priced below the national average. So bottom line, is it conceivable that long term over the next 10, 15 years, Milwaukee real estate prices will creep up to the national average? I would say that is a real possibility. So let's wrap this up. I think in summary, there is a lot of good arguments to be made why real estate prices in the Milwaukee area could be significantly higher 10 years from now compared with what where they are today. I don't think millennials are going to change their mind anytime soon about buying their first home. Uh, demographic trends are always very slow to change. I don't think the Wisconsin builders are going to all of a sudden explode their production and flood the market with new homes. So also that will take years to uh, change and unfold its impact. So there's a lot of reasons. But is the real estate market going to develop linear? I don't think so either. There's always ups and downs in the cycle. There's events that are unforeseeable, like nobody could have anticipated COVID and the impact it had on the market. So it's prudent to assume that we're going to see some highs and some lows in the market. But even though a number of over $400,000 for a median price home in Milwaukee seems a little bit absurd from today's point of view, when you run the numbers, it is actually relatively conceivable. If you do the math, that comes out to a 4.1% annual increase. And that is relatively conservative. If you remember the house from Ann Arbor that uh, increased in value about at a rate of 5.1% every year. So that doesn't even consider catching up to the national average. So we will see what's going to happen. Keep an eye on my market updates. I will have the latest numbers for you every month here ready for you to look at. We will see what's going to happen with inventory. I think we're going to see some highs and we're going to see some lows in the market that is going to be anticipated. But there is a good case to be made that real estate in Milwaukee is going to be priced substantially higher 
in 10 years than it is today. If you want to stay updated on all things real estate here in the Milwaukee area, consider subscribing to my channel. Don't miss out on a monthly market update. I'll keep you posted on what's going on with inventory. And if you want to take it a step further, take a look at my website on pointrg.com. You can, for example, request access to the MLS there. You can schedule a call with me. If you click on the red button, that gives you access to my personal calendar and you can pick an appointment that's open uh, that works for your personal schedule and we can hop on a phone call or on a Zoom call. You can also leave me a message here on the website if you're wondering about what your house is currently worth, what might be a good strategy for you and for your family or any other question that you have about the Milwaukee real estate market. Always love hearing from you. Don't forget, you can also put a comment in the comment section below here on YouTube. And that's pretty much all I had for you today. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you at the next one.